Hardscape Academy, Inspector Training. Here we are in uh, Patterson, New Jersey, Washington Street. Uh, and um, we have a fire escape here with a cantilever. And this is Inspector Training to find out how and what kind of violation can be written if you were just walking by and underneath this fire escape and what kind of violation you could write. So the law require, allows you to write two types of violations. One is the deterioration violation and one is a structural. So it must be structurally sound, must be kept painted. The easiest one always to write is a violation on paint. And it's easy to find out whether we got a violation or not. Does it have more rust than paint? As indicated by this piece down here, it's got more rust than paint. So you can write that violation, walk away, and you write the violation always as repair, paint, test. The repair word automatically triggers the requirement for an evaluation by a structural engineer. So don't pinpoint a tread, don't pinpoint a rail, don't pinpoint anything. Just say repair, paint, test. The structural engineer is going to find out what's wrong with this fire escape. But for some reason, let's say uh, the owner got wind that you were coming down and they threw a quick paint job on this last week and this thing was pristine black when you got here. What else can you look for that you can write a structural violation on? So let's take a look at the first sign right away. The most obvious is when you have square head bolts on any fire escape. That's an indication that this 50 to 75 plus year old fire escape has never been refurbished in its lifetime. And if you look up all the stairs, uh, nothing but square head bolts. So if you start seeing nothing but square head bolts on all the supports, square head bolts on the treads, square head bolts everywhere, that's an indication that this 75 year old fire escape has never been refurbished ever in its lifetime. So that's a violation. You're guaranteed to have some structural problems on this fire escape somewhere with one of these 75 year old bolts. Which one? Nobody knows, and that's the reason an evaluation is needed. Minimally, when the fire escape gets refurbished, all the stair treads get rebolted with hex head bolts. Minimally, on a refurbishment with square head bolts. That way you eliminate the, the liability of the tread situation. Minimally, all the supports get backed up with a new bolt or get a bolt changed out. Minimally. So that this ha fire escape has minimally got a refurbishment of some kind. Now when it comes down to rails and other non-essential, non-critical structural components, those can be tested and found that the original bolt is still in good condition. But otherwise, on this fire escape, we would come in and refurbish all the treads minimally, all the supports would get rebolted and or, or, or backed up with a new bolt and keeping the old bolt so that we can guarantee it. And um, let's take a look at some other issues that are on here. You gotta look for cement. And if you have cement problems on this fire escape, and if you look up, you see any spalling, you can write a violation. Another giveaway is, see that tear coming down the wall? That's an indication that water has penetrated into the building. If you look up, up there you see tears coming down the wall next to the support. So that means water has penetrated. So the cement now is in question on this fire escape also. And then the last thing this fire escape doesn't have, it doesn't have a release arm. Now release arm is very important. It stops people from breaking into the building because right now I can grab this, jump up and grab this, and I'll pull this down, I'll break into the building. But if it has a release arm, I can't pull it down. So the release arm first acts as an anti-theft device. Number two is that this thing is supposed to drop two to three feet per second when released. So since there is no release arm, let's say there was one, you'd release it down at this area, it would drop two to three feet per second, hit the ground, stay down. That's a properly released cantilever. Right now, I have to have people come out of the building, they have to step out five to eight steps, their weight is what's going to counteract this. It's going to come down 5 to 10 feet per second, hit the ground, throw them off the fire escape if they don't hold on, and then it goes right back up. Problem is when the firemen arrive one minute, 10 minutes, or an hour later to this fire, somebody has to pull this down and hold it down for the other firemen. So you lose one fireman to hold the cantilever down, and that's not how it was ever built. These things are built to come down, stay down when they hit the ground so that people can self-evacuate until the firemen arrive. If you have any questions on this inspection, on this video, and you'd like some further training on this particular fire escape, give us a call at Fire Escape Engineers, 866-649-0333. As always, you can visit the, the YouTube channel, Fire Escape Academy Inspector Training, for further videos throughout the country on fire escapes just like this one. And if you want to start a program in your city of fire escape awareness, we'll send you free industry standard confidence tests, tags, uh, low test criteria, Firescape repair procedures, we'll send it to you free of charge. Just give us a call or visit our website, firescapeengineers.com.